My name is Catherine Wallach, and I am the Architectural Records Archivist in Special Collections. The archives are, are in Mullins Library, which is the main library on the University of Arkansas campus, and it's adjacent to the Faye Jones School of Architecture and Design. The architectural archives have, have existed more formally for about a dozen years. We've had architectural papers um, since the 70s, but it was only after Faye Jones' papers were processed and made available to the public that Faye's papers and Edward Durrell Stone's papers and, the, and other documents came together as a body to be, create the architectural archives. How many things do we keep in the archives? Lots and lots. I can't give you an exact number, but I can give you an idea of the magnitude of scale. For example, um, in, in both the Faye Jones collection and the Edward Durrell Stone papers, there are about uh, 30,000 drawings each. And so that's just the drawings. And then we have um, boxes upon boxes of correspondence, um, periodicals, photographs, other sorts of documents. So uh, there are a lot of materials there for, for researchers and students and, and the general public to use. The primary thing we keep in the archive are documents. We do keep some models and some other materials, but documents are sort of the bread and, and butter of, of what the researchers who visit us want to look at. A, a number of, of other landscape architects and architects who, who practice in the state and who made important contributions um, to the design profession, such as Neil Hamill Park, um, and John Williams, the founder of the School of Architecture, Cyrus Sutherland, known for his preservation work. We have a photography collection that's extraordinary from Jeff Winningham uh, on vernacular architecture. So there's really an interesting range of materials. Special Collections is like the rest of the library. You can just come in and, and use the resources, except that it's a non-circulating collection. Um, because it's a, a little bit special, it's, it's easier to, to do your re, a little bit of research online and, or have an idea what it is that you want to look at before you come in. Um, if you email us and make an appointment, then we can have materials ready for you or we're ready to help you out. Um, so we know that there's someone there to help you with materials. Sometimes that's hard to do when you haven't been there or, don't, or if you're not too familiar with us. So I love to have classes in to visit and to get an idea of the range of materials we have to offer. The most important things are that they're protected from light and they are in a temperature and humidity controlled environment. Beyond that, um, most things are stored in acid-free boxes. Uh, drawings, oversized drawings, like most architectural drawings are, um, are st stored in map cases or, or, or big drawing files, flat files, or, and sometimes they're rolled in acid-free tubes. I think there's a lot of different ways that students can use the archives. Uh, I think the, maybe the most important thing is that we've got design documents from every stage of the design process, from the most conceptual and schematic drawings through construction documents. So students can see, can see these design process from, from the very beginning. But they can also learn about the profession, see contractual documents, um, see correspondence with clients, but they can also study history through, through drawings, correspondence, and periodicals, and photographs. But the materials have also served as context, as resources, and inspiration for design ideas, so the possibilities are not really limited. For students, seeing these drawings can be very inspirational. I think that, especially when you're starting out, to be able to see that 
that these well-known and award-winning design professionals start out, out in the same way with, with simple ideas and even ideas that are bad ones that they have to throw away. Um, and also to, they serve as great reminders of the reiterative nature of design. Um, the things need to be done again and again and that it takes a lot of steps to get things to a finished, polished end. This is a wonderful um, hand-drawn sketch by Faye Jones of Pine Cone Pavilion at Crosby Arboretum. It's kind of a, a rough looking drawing. It's not very polished compared to what a lot of perspective drawings you might see are. This one is not on a very fancy piece of paper. This is yellow trace. Yellow trace is most often used to get ideas out. Um, it's kind of a cheap paper. And so that's why you see those kind of quick, rough gestural lines on it. And this shows the, the building, which most of it is open air in this, in this uh, kind of conceptual drawing. It's, it's just not very polished, but the Faye, while he's drawing this, is, is using the drawing to communicate with himself, trying to get the idea out on the paper, testing the idea through the drawing. So the, so the making of the drawing is part of the process. Crosby Arboretum is a really special project that um, Faye Jones worked with, on with Ed Blake, who was a remarkable landscape architect. Uh, Ed Blake immersed himself in the environment of the Arboretum, um, which was in the piney woods. And so Ed spent an incredible amount of time throughout all the different seasons taking notes um, and doing sketches of the different flora and fauna and what happened seasonally, um, making records of those, so that the, the design part of the Arboretum reflected um, all these different subtle qualities of the landscape to the visitors. You can really tell that this is a, um, that Faye is thinking about the site and the relationship to the site, the integration of the building to the landscape. You see those plants in the foreground um, and the, the transparency, the way the building is kind of see-through, if you will, and the way that the structure of the building sort of become like trees um, themselves. All those columns are, are tree-like. Um, and so that there becomes a dialogue, kind of a, a visual conversation between the landscape and the building. This is a sketch of Edward Durrell Stone's per Perpetual Savings and Loan in Los Angeles, California. Um, it's kind of a wonderful drawing and it really talks about kind of the speed of its own making. Um, it says quick, doesn't it? Or with those really rough, quickly torn edges of the sheet of yellow tracing paper. Um, even the little splashes or, or accidental bits of ink on there kind of talk about the, the quickness in which um, the rendering was done. Um, this is a, an, a very urban drawing, but you can see that uh, Stone was thinking about how this urban drawing was going to fit into that, that landscape of Los Angeles. This house for Roy Reed is special for a number of reasons. The design is based on a vernacular building type, which is a barn. Um, and we, we don't really see that in other Faye Jones projects. I mean, it, it's in Haggai, Arkansas, and it looks like barns of the region. This project dates to around 1978, 1979. The initial correspondence was from when Roy Reed wrote it from London as he was planning to move back to Arkansas. So this is a presentation drawing, um, but it's more modest than we might see for a, a corporate client, right? Because it's just an individual with their, the budget for their house. And this is, a, is not a big house. It's a, it's a fairly modest house for an architect design house. 
it makes for this sweet little series of drawings. From level two to level three, there's a, a double story space with, with a bridge that spans over it. The parts that are covered in red are, are the walls. And so th those are continuous th through, through both floors. Um, but this, this gives you a sense of kind of the big volume you get inside. So, th so that remains kind of the, the barn-like quality of the space. Another thing that's interesting is that, that that character stays in the final design, but there are changes between this and the house that finally gets built. I love this drawing. This is my favorite drawing from the construction drawings of Thorncrown Chapel, which is the project that put Faye Jones on the map for most Americans um, and propelled him into fame. The reason it's such a fantastic drawing is because really this is the drawing that gives the most information about building the building. Those, uh, those circles include um, larger scale details. A lot of people don't see hand done drawings like this anymore because technology has meant that this sort of thing isn't done anymore. Um, but the line weights and the craft of this is really beautiful. If you, if you look at foundation and the footing, the connection between the window frame uh, on the left side and it, it, the sill, that the cut line is, is just beautiful, that very dark line that creeps up from the ground and around and back down into the interior really gives you a sense of the, uh, of the edge there. One of the hallmarks of Thorn Crown is a very p special part of the structure. Right there in the center, where normally you'd expect these structural pieces of lumber to be overlapping and heavy, Faye works on this detail to create a void. And there's beautiful photographs where, where this void has light piercing through it. And so right in the middle of this drawing, this kind of darkest part in the center, you see that diamond shape. And that is a drawing of, of, the, of the piece of steel that receives these four pieces of lumber um, that are, are supporting the whole structural frame, and it's empty in the middle. And so it's this dramatic piece of the building holding everything up that's empty in the center. Thanks for learning a little bit about Arkansas's architectural archives. I hope you have a chance to come by yourselves and learn a little bit more about Arkansas's designers and designs.